Welcome to the Illinois Association of Park Districts Parkcast. I'm Wayne Utterback, Director of Communications and Digital Content. And today I am joined by Nan Buckert, the Director of Education for the Lake County Forest Preserves. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day, Nan, to talk with me a little bit. I am pleased to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Now, the reason why I'm inviting you to chat today is because I heard about this uh, incredible recognition you got recently about being inducted into the Outdoor Hall of Fame. And I wanted to talk with you a little bit about that. It's, uh, it's pretty incredible to think about. Now, uh, the Outdoor Hall of Fame, it seems like a kind of a, a wide net there of, of, of all things encompassing outdoors. Uh, what can you tell me about, uh, about this recognition and, and just what it means to you personally? Well, the recognition is, is given on a statewide um, event and, or in a statewide issue and it it deals with conservation specifically and um and many times it's given to those practitioners that are on the ground saving land or making sure that it's protected and as an educator i i would have never dreamed that i would be included in that group and so it is just a huge honor and a, a bit overwhelming to think of me in the list of the the really well-known conservationists in illinois now, how long have you been with the Lake County Forest Preserve? I have been here a very long time, going on, <laughs> going on almost four decades. Oh, wow. Okay. So I started my career in the field as a naturalist doing the day-to-day -day teaching and now have, I have been the director for many years and help to guide our, our overall direction of, of the education, both on the environmental education side and the human history side and uh, work to make sure that people understand that those are integral, integrally related, that they're not separate things, that one influences the other. Now, uh, with this recognition, um, was it something someone nominated you for, or do they just, do the, they, are they watching and seeing who is, who's making waves and, uh, and uh, the, decides that and they realize the, that you are somebody to reach out to? Um, our, the executive director of the Forest Preserve District coordinated the nomination and uh, did worked with other people to get letters of recommendation as well as writing the narrative and writing the narrative and submitting it. And they did it without me knowing it. I <laughs> got a phone call one day that said, "Congratulations, you are going to be honored and inducted into the Illinois Hall of Fame," which was just uh, an amazing thing. Now, I'm, for you, just in general, um, what does the outdoors mean? Uh, what, for you, what, what, is it, what is it that you tell people when you're educating them? And what are you wanting to impart upon them so that they understand a little bit more about the world that you, you work in, you live in? Well, nature and the natural environment is something that sustains all human life. And without it, even people in cities wouldn't be able to have a good life or life at all. So it's really, really important in that broad general sense. For me personally, being able to be outdoors rejuvenates me, refreshes me, keeps me sharp, just gives me that extra energy to be able to, to go on, you know, and do all the things that we need to do. And I'm very fortunate that I've been able to spend my career helping people understand that importance to them personally, but also then in that larger sense that it's the thing that's going to make you be and uh, have a good life. Now, with the uh, Lake County Forest Preserves, are there any areas in particular you like visiting often? Is there anywhere there that you recommend? To people? Well, it's it's kind of like that favorite child. You're not supposed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> in in the forest preserve in Lake County, we have 64 sites and they each have different characters, just like your your own children are going to each have their different strengths and their different things that just really strike your heart. And so that's that's very much the way that I am with the forest preserves. I can say that I've spent a good deal of my career actually at one of the preserves. And so I know that preserve very, very well. And that's Ryerson Woods. What is it? What is it about those woods that you love so much? Well, th those woods in particular have not been impacted heavily by people. So it's not a farmer's field that's been restored back to the wetlands or to a prairie. This is a natural woodland that had very little 
human impact that changed it significantly. And so it has that that designation of an Illinois Nature Preserve, which is a really high standard, as many of your listeners probably realize, but it also has really significant human history in it and how it was protected and the people that used the area first with the natives and then moving into uh, to later years closer to now. So it's, it's a really interesting site from that perspective. Now, uh, one of the things when I was when I was reading about this uh, this award, this recognition you got, I, they were talking about the Lake County Nature Network, and I was hoping you could talk to me a little bit about that because that seemed really interesting to me and something I wanted to learn a little bit more about. The Na- Lake County Nature Network was formed um, some years ago, about fifteen years ago, and it's a collaborative of organizations that work with people in nature. So it. it is not necessarily just nature centers or organizations like mine. It is also libraries that try to reach out to them, uh, park districts, things like that. So uh, this coalition of of organizations are just trying to make sure that everybody has access to nature and spends time outside. So we help advertise each other's programs and we give support to programs and it's just a way for us to work together. And when possible, possible not reinvent the wheel. <laughs> now, uh, now, the educational element of everything, uh, you know, and a lot of the folks I've been talking to, uh, not just in podcasts, but when we go to events, IAPD events, uh, I hear so much about education, just how, how important it is to get younger people involved in things like conservation, in outdoor life, and and the things that uh, all of our agencies take part in. How important is it, do you feel, to get young people excited and and educated on on things like conservation in those formative years? It's it's really critical. It's very critical. Those things that you are exposed to yeah, early in your life are the things that seem to stick with you. So if if you're if your family was really into soccer, you're probably going to like soccer as an adult or have some interest in it. So the same thing is true with nature. And as I mentioned earlier, because it is so fundamental to our health to have a healthy environment, people need to understand that from early on so that they can be responsible stewards as they grow older. Now, when I think about those stewards, um, what are some of the experiences that, that your agency offers that you offer to the younger folks that they've really embraced, they really latched onto? Is there anything in particular that you've seen surging popularity in or you know, something that is, is pretty consistently like well responded to? That's a that's a really tough question because it's really personalized for the family or the for the kids. So some kids like reptiles and, and <laughs> anything snake, it, they're there and other kids don't like snakes and don't want to be near there. But the thing I think that that is the common denominator is that we try to provide really hands-on real world experiences. So if we're talking about insects, we're gonna be out in an area where we can use a sweep net to be able to catch them and look at them and show kids that they shouldn't be afraid of the spider that's crawling there, that it's just doing its job and being part of nature. So we, we have such a variety of programs that we hope to get everybody kids and adults alike. And sometimes by offering programs to the young young kids, we actually hook the parents and they didn't even know it. <laughs> I, I <laughs> Those are the you, best. I can tell you there are a number of events that I've gone to with my kids uh, here in Springfield where we go and then I realize that I'm learning just as much as they are. Or, yep. or my daughter will go to the zoo and she'll come back and she'll hit me with some fact about an animal she saw that I didn't know about. Right. And it's always... It's always, it's, it's fun. It's fun to have those experiences where you're both learning together. Yeah, that shared experience is always the best as a family. I, I imagine with, with any, anyone who's watching, the experience is always the thing that you're hoping is going to stick with them for a long time. Right. Um, I, I know when I, when I think back with just my experiences with my kids, um, I can think of just endless ones that involve being outdoors, walking on trails, uh, going to events that are, you know, based on learning about the cowls or, or learning about some specific animal. Um, 
what do you think what do you think has to be done to kind of keep evolving with the times to keep you know the next generations of kids as engaged uh do you, are you seeing any like technological things that you're having to sort of adapt to 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 reach those markets with um with the with covid the invent the advent of covid it helped us to really get to the point where we were going to offer virtual programs in a really significant way and make them really as engaging as we could we all we wanted to do virtual programs for a long time but we didn't have the time to really spend on making sure that we had them high quality so we flipped pretty quickly and have adapted to zoom and other programs for that but um, on a more day-to-day -day, um, activities, we have continued to evolve as we look at things that are, as the world changes in, in the strategic plan for the forest preserve. So for example, one of the things that the forest preserve wants to do is be as sustainable as possible. And that's a lot of different things to a lot of people. And we have a, a building that is a lead platinum building, which is a highly rated, highly, con or it's got a lot of sustainability, including um, solar panels on it. And we do programming around that for school children, both younger children, high, a lot of high schools participate, and then adults. And we're in the process actually of building on that same site at Ryerson Woods, um, a net zero energy building, which means that it's going to use, it's going to make as much energy through its solar panels every year as it uses over the stretch of the year. And that's going to be a big education piece. So we continually look at what's happening in society and try to make sure that we're talking about that sustainability, the reaction to the climate changes, et cetera, so that, that we are current with what's going on and making sure that we have significance in people's lives. Now, now with four decades of experience in this world, um, what what would you say has kind of become your philosophy for just the things that you do day to day? Is there a particular mindset that you walk into the doors of your office with and that motivates you for the day? What an interesting question. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I think that I, through my career, I have always looked to see how we can learn from what happened today to get better tomorrow. And so I try really hard to keep looking around and seeing where we are and evaluating that and having the people I work with evaluate it so that we can make sure and continue to provide that service of excellence. And um, it's not always easy. And there are certainly challenges along the way, <laughs> but the same old, same old is not good enough for me. Now, uh, I have one more question for you. Um, what keeps you excited about conservation? What, what is that one like item that like tethers you and keeps everything together? What is the one, one thing that when you think about that it brings you in the office every day, you say, like, I'm ready to go? It's, it's those little wins that you don't expect. So that when you're, when you see on a Facebook post that people that you have no idea who they are, say things like, I just cut all the black thorn out of my yard. And it was their yard, not the forest preserve, that you know that that was a win, that that person now understands that buckthorn's not a plant that we want to have around and is damaging. So paying attention to the, that opportunity for those little wins. You, you don't know whether or not it's going to be that, that light bulb look in a third grader's eyes when they <laughs> totally understand what you're trying to say. And you just don't know what it is. And that's the thing that just keeps motivating me that we can just, we know that we're making that connection. All right. Well, I want to congratulate you once again on, on you. being recognized for the uh, Illinois Outdoor Hall of Fame. Uh, I just think it's awesome. Anytime you, you get to see somebody who has been so passionate about, about the world of parks, recreation, forest preserves, and really embraces it and makes a change in your community. I think it's awesome. 
And I, I congratulate you for it. And I, I thank you for taking some time out of your day to just talk with me a little bit about it. You're very welcome, Wayne. But I would be remiss if I didn't say it wasn't me alone who did all these wonderful things that there was <laughs> always been lots of supportive people and lots of people that helped me with the work. So it's, you know, I wouldn't be where I was if I didn't have great people around me. Hey, that's, uh, it's always great when you can do great things with other people. So yeah, exactly. Thanks. It makes it more fun, certainly. A absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, I appreciate you doing this great podcast with me today. So you're very thank you, welcome. Thank you very much, man. And uh, you keep doing the amazing work that you're doing. Thank you, Wayne. All right. Thank you.